on homemade Da Vinci Resolve controller. So I did what anyone else would do in that situation. You wanna get home? And I had a good long think about it. You have to think of something fast. I've got an old Behringer controller. Intercepts the controllers and clicks things and... Oh! There's my lift. If I press it, it resets. My plan is, is actually to make it so that I can select a page and then it will reassign all these knobs to whatever specific bit of the colour page that I'm using, but... I'm going to press the Y play button twice. Ah! Oh, drops it into position. Excuse the mess, but I've been, uh, I've been working here. This is the update to my uh, repurposed Behringer MIDI controller to act as a DaVinci Resolve controller. Um, I must mention in the previous video, I talked about uh, MIDI grade being an option and I hadn't really read much up on it, but when I've looked more into it, I think it's actually working with a similar kind of thing to what I'm doing here. But um, I've improved mine massively since the last video. Thanks to everyone that watched it. It got quite a few thousand views very quickly. So um, here is the update. Let's go from the top. I've got the button here that brings up the primaries as it did last time. And then I've got HDR. I've got uh, the curves on that page there. I've got the key on that page there. Um, I've got another one which kind of takes it to monochrome and back. The look is actually giving it a little bit of color, but leave that aside. Um, and then I've got the blur page there. And then at the bottom row here, I've got the edit page. I've got the cut page. I've got the, uh, the audio page, the Fairlight page. I've written audio on there. I've got the fusion page available to me, which is taking some time to open. Come on, Resolve. I think this version is getting, uh, getting a bit wary because it knows I'm downloading the beta at the moment anyway and then I've got the uh, deliver page on there if I go back to primaries it automatically selects the color page first let's have some tea mmm oh that's a good cup of tea I needed that right there are some things in this that are too cool to even go into and if you don't wait till the end of the video and watch the coolest feature of this you know well then you don't deserve to be watching any of it so uh, or look at the code which i'm going to give away for free so i'm in my primary tabs what have i done at the moment i've got here written on a bit of gaffer tape i've got my lift here press to reset i've got my gamma which is nice i've got my gain i've also got my offset which is cool but I've also got temperature, I've got tint, I've got contrast, and then the last one there I've got is uh, saturation. And then if I go into HDR, it reassigns what all of these are. So now I've got exposure mapped to that one. I've got my HDR contrast. I've got the pivot for the HDR contrast. And finally there, I've got my mid detail, which is the same mid detail as on the primaries page, but I ran out of uh, knobs, so I mapped that in the HDR. Um, so then if I move along to curves, none of these actually do anything on curves at the moment. If I go to key, it will control the gain. Um, and if I go to blur, I can turn the blur and the sharpen up and down, which is, is really, really useful. So all of that stuff is absolutely brilliant. Over here, I've got uh, buttons to, um, I'm gonna reset that node. Um, I can disable and enable a node. So if I um, turn up something, uh, let's go to the primaries, turn up the lift, I can disable and enable that with a button press, which is really good. Um, I can go back and forward on clips with these two buttons here and create new nodes new serial nodes, a new parallel node, which is all very good. I can undo and redo with these buttons here. I mean, this has just saved so much time in my workflow. Back and forward on the nodes, which is excellent. So there's a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna show you the creme de la creme, the thing that I've been wanting to do for ages, because obviously you get sessions like this where I've got two shots there, and although they're both shot with Blackmagic cameras, this here is sort of way more exposed and way more contrasty than this one here, and I kind of want to match them somehow. So let me just make sure that all the grades are reset. And what I'm going to do is something that I quite often do with a clip like this, is I'm going to pick some points and use them as reference points and try and copy those points to another 
clip. So I'm going to skip to the end because Chris is lit on his own, which is similar to the clip there that I want to match it to. So I'm going to get a point here under the drum kit on the riser. I'm going to get a point here on his head. I'm going to get a point on the light and I'm going to take one from his clothing and the lit bit of his clothing. So let's get something from his shoulder there. And I've got these uh, points that are on the curve. And then what I would usually do if I was trying to match a shot like that is I'd go to the other shot and I'd try and take points that are the same. So I would say I want to get the shoulder of his shirt there. I'm going to get the top of his head there. I'm going to get under the drum kit here and one of those lights and you can see these are all in different places and then I'd look back at this shot and I'd say my lowest point is just two sort of notches up or so so I'd move this to two notches down and then this one here is is two notches above the first major line so I want to bring this down to two notches above and you can see what I mean eventually sort of I get to a point where the shot is somewhere close to what I'm um, what I'm looking for and um, it matches a little bit closer to this which is what I was looking to do right this is a needed T moment oh this is the most useful and coolest thing that I've ever done I've slightly automated this process so um, let's get to the end here where Chris is on his own and he's lit I'm also gonna grab a still of that because that will make life easy uh, and then we're just going to get the points, so sort of under the drum kit there. Perfect, perfect. And now we're going to go to this shot here. I want to copy the same contrast curve, but with my new little MIDI controller. So again, same positions. Four points on there now. Now we need to learn the point so I'm going to go to this here and I'm going to press the Y learn button and Y as in because it's learning the Y position of the mouse Y learn you've got to learn otherwise you're never going to know anything right here we go press it once go to the second position press it twice go to the third position press it three times and then I'm going to go to the fourth position and press it four times and now I'm going to go to this curve where I've got all my points. I'm going to go to the first position. I'm going to press the Y play button once. Oh, drops it into position. I'm going to press the Y play button twice. Oh, drops it into position. Three times. Oh, four times. And that's put all of those in the same place that I had for this still here so if I drag the still so you can see the whole thing and we can just go back and forwards between the two and I think actually they're matched pretty well I might just bring this one back a tiny bit just might be a bit too harsh just to 90 odd but I actually think that's worked really well and that's saved so much time rather than me using a mouse sort of trying to move things up and down I can just learn the Y position of the mouse and apply it afterwards so now I've learned those positions let's just do it on uh, do it on this I'm gonna take a position here uh, a bit of his um, brightly lit shirt there uh, we haven't got any other points so I'm just gonna learn uh, so I'm gonna play point two and point three and there we go if I want to add a serial node and then, I don't know, go to my primaries and maybe bring the lift down a bit and turn the gamma up or whatever. It's all just grabbable and doable at any point. And of course, I can just reset that node, go back another node, reset that node, and we're back to where we started. And I can undo that. Just a nice little button press on this. So this is just really game changing. And I know it's nowhere near as good as an actual panel by black magic right but i'm just trying to repurpose something that that i already own you know and and do something cool with it so you know if you like what i'm doing um leave us a comment 
get in touch. I'm going to put the code up um, as and when I do. The link will be in the description. And uh, yeah, see you in another video.